Welcome to the PowerShell Conference Europe 2020, this time virtually. I'm Miriam and I'll be presenting What the Lark, So Many Events, So Little Time, this time in the PowerShell edition. First of all, big thank you to all of our sponsors. Without you, PSConf EU would not be possible at all. So thank you so much. A little bit about me. So my name is Miriam Wiesner and I work as a security program manager for Microsoft Defender ATP. And before I joined this team, I worked as a Prima Field Engineer and helped my customers to configure their environments more secure and also to detect anomalies and potential threats. And this is actually also where my story starts. But before we dive into that, uh, just a disclaimer. This presentation and the tool is all my personal work, is not supported at all by Microsoft. So if you have any issues with it, any questions, anything that you would like to have implemented, don't approach Microsoft, just go directly to me. So when I worked as a Prima Field Engineer to support my customers at Microsoft. This was not an accurate image of me when supporting customers. This should just demonstrate an attacker because most companies are not aware when they are being attacked. Most companies are being attacked and only maybe after 200 days, if companies detected at all attackers are being detected and the company starts to build measurements or starts to get the attacker out of the environment and well this is a problem because the attacker has more than 200 days to do everything what he or she likes to do in the environment and also gets foothold there and uh, well, they get data, they can do everything what they want to and also get identities. And then when the attacker is already in the environment, it is really, really hard to get them out and to protect customers and to also provide them with recommendations on what to audit Microsoft has released security baselines, which are part of the Microsoft Security Compliance Toolkit. So in this security toolkit, there are not only baselines, there's also a tool to compare the baselines called Policy Analyzer. And if we take a closer look at the baseline itself, we see that there are audit policies within um, so that you can configure additional event IDs that will be generated if you apply this baseline. And just be careful when applying this baseline because there are also other settings within that can easily break your environment. So audit, make a plan and then apply the settings. But those audit policies here, they just create additional event IDs. And so I also was at a customer and I recommended, oh yes, we do have these baselines. Uh, you should apply them to better security audit your environment. And so the customer asked me, well, do you actually know what event IDs will be generated if I apply this baseline? Do you have a documentation somewhere? And I was like, well, no, we don't have a documentation on that. And so the customer asked me to write down all the event IDs that would be generated if they apply a certain security baseline. So I sat down and worked on the first baseline when the customer approached me and asked me, oh, and while you're at it, could you maybe also write down the events that would be generated if I would apply this baseline, this baseline, this baseline, oh, and this baseline too. 
And I was like, no way, because that was way too much work. And so I thought about it and I was like, okay, if I don't have the time to write down every event ID that would be generated by a thousand base lines, what can I do? And the answer was, well, I can automate it. And this was the time when the first version of event list was born back then. It was just an Excel sheet with some macros behind. There was an option to import baselines and then you can, could just uh, generate an event list for a certain baseline. So the customer was happy because they could just see what events would be generated. And I moved on, I uh, went to the next customer and the customer was like, okay, nice, event list is great. But actually, do you know MITRE at check? And will, is there an option to include MITRE at check into your tool? And so if you don't know MITRE at check yet, most of you sh might have heard about it. But for those who have never heard about it, just a short explanation. So MITRE attack is a framework to systematically map attackers' behaviors into categories to help closing gaps in organizations' cyber defense and protection. And in this picture, you see the techniques mapped to the data sources. Now let's get back to that later. Uh, this is how it looks on the MITRE uh, check uh, website and you see there are different areas and um, several techniques within those areas and if you open one of the techniques uh, there are some recommendations uh, not only recommendations also descriptions what the attacker can do within this attack and it just helps organizations to better understand what an attacker is capable of and how they can protect their resources. And as I said, this picture here just displays the MITRE attack techniques mapped to data sources. We are only talking about the Windows event logs here as a data source. So this is, um, not everything about MITRE attack. It is just a small area, but it is a very important one. So if you build your own SOC from the scratch, or if you want to detect attackers in your environment, what is important? So first of all, if you apply a particular baseline, what events are being generated. Secondly, if you already know what events are being generated and you want to forward your events into your SIEM system, many customers do have the problem that they don't have all the storage space in the world. So maybe it would make sense to only forward the events that are useful for security detection. So secondly, you want to know which events should be forwarded. And last but not least, if you have all the data in one place, what do you do with that data? So some people say, okay, well, we keep it for maybe forensic reasons. Well, well, if you just keep it for forensic reasons, and if you never hunt it within then you are super helpless if there is a breach. And if you never worked with the data, you will also not work with the data in that moment. So last but not least, you want to proactively hunt in this data to find out if there is something strange going on. And this is how the first version of Eventlist was created. So now I moved to PowerShell and created a PowerShell UI so that the customer or the user could just select a baseline and see directly what events are being generated. Not only the events, they could also find out which MITRE attack techniques and area would 
be affected. And there's a lot more that I will just demonstrate later within my demo. And this tool was or is already uh, released. I released it somewhat last year. And since then, uh, I also received some asks, okay, maybe can you also open it for the CLI so that we can automate uh, our own detections, our own baselines. And yes, I worked on it. And let me present event list version two now also with PowerShell CLI support. So let's first have a look at the user interface. You can open it by typing in open event list GUI and the user interface opens. You have the option to select a baseline and to immediately see which MITRE attack techniques are being populated. You can also import your own baselines or Microsoft security baselines or backed up GPO. You can also delete all baselines or only one baseline. And you still have the old, the very first functionality of generating an event list to see what events would be generated if you apply a certain baseline. You can also say, okay, I want to select several MITRE techniques and areas, and I want to see what events I need to monitor if I want to detect for those techniques by selecting all MITRE attack events. Let's check it out on the command line. So you can see all the commands that are available by uh, running the get command uh, command <laughs> and uh, to see all the baselines that are available that are already uh, in the database behind you can just run the get baseline name from DB. You can also say okay I just want to um, check for a particular baseline so let's see if this baseline is already in the database. So this makes, for example, sense if you just automate something with this command. So let's check if the domain controller for Windows Server 2019 baseline is already in the database. And you see, okay, there's out output. It is in the database. So if you just add some non some, something that is not in the database and run it, you just get no output at all. You can also remove all baselines in the database. So if you run the remove all baseline command, nothing is in the database anymore. But I already prepared some baselines. So those are the latest and greatest baselines that you can download from Microsoft. And if you just import them, the database populates again with all the baselines. And once the import is through, you can see uh, what baselines are now in the database. And let's check. So here we go again. So if you want to just automate it and you say, okay, the third one here, the uh, this one database, uh, this, this baseline is out of date and you want to remove it, you can select it with the index 
and remove one baseline. And now if you check for the SVM Windows 10 uh, Redstone 1, then you see in the get baselines, it is gone. So to get all the event IDs that would be configured from a particular baseline, you can use the get baseline event list um, and pipe one baseline into it. And here we go, you get all the event IDs and also the links to the uh, additional information just as nice objects. You can also say, okay, I just want to have it in outgrid view to have my old um, view again. So let's move on to the next. If we want to, for example, you remember um, here in event list, you remember generate event list and generate all MITRE ATT&CK events. So if we want to perform this from the command line, then we have here the get MITRE event list command. And if we run it, we get all the event IDs and all mapped to the MITRE ATT&CK techniques. And now this takes some time because there are a lot. And yes, there is still some help needed to fill in the database with all the uh, event ID names and also additional information. And if you just want to have it again in the outgrid view, this makes it easier to just check it. You can also say, I just want this particular baseline um, pipe to the MITRE event list and well it has basically has the same effect as uh, piping the baseline name here um, but you can also pipe in or say I want to see what events are being mapped to these techniques by just mentioning the techniques. or just one technique. With that, within the identity parameter, you can either specify the, a baseline name or the techniques. So that was the first functionality. and somehow I closed the event list. Uh, we also have other functionalities within event list. So if you remember my presentation earlier, I mentioned that there is another problem when building your SOC. So if you have limited storage space, you maybe don't want to forward all the event IDs that are available so you want to select but this is super annoying to write down every single event id that you want to forward and to simplify this annoying task i also uh, created the generate generate agent config within event list and now you can just select the uh, forwarder agent that you would like to create a configuration snippet for. And here for Arcside or other, uh, oh, for other um, XPath based SIEM systems, you can just use the Arcside and copy and paste it to your configuration. Similar for Splunk and Yes, at this very moment, you don't need to restrict event IDs for Microsoft Defender ATP. So let's see how this looks like on the CLI. So we 
definitely we definitely need the forwarder name so in this case i chose splunk universal forwarder and we need the technique that we want to create an agent config string we also can select several techniques and here we are with all our event ids that are necessary to cover these techniques also if you select more techniques or another forwarder name and yes microsoft defender atp is still as the easter egg configured but you don't have to only rely on the technique ids because that is annoying to write down all the technique ids for one baseline you can also just pipe in one baseline or one gpo and just get your very own agent config for this baseline in event list there is also another possibility. So if you say, for example, I want to select several techniques or several areas, and for whatever reason you have, I only wanted to create a GPO for those techniques, then you can just select the MITRE ATT&CK techniques and click on generate GPO. And now here uh, the, the folder picker um, starts and you can just choose where you want to store your, um, your very new GPO. And ta-da! Here's your brand new GPO that allows you detecting for all the selected MITRE ATT&CK techniques. We can also do this from the command line. So we can also pipe a baseline name into the get group policy from my techniques but you can also pipe in the techniques into So for example, you can pipe in the techniques in there and generate your very own GPO. Let's check it's in here. And here's your latest GPO. can also only select one identity and just create another GPO for that. So and last but not least, if you remember the last issue, the hunting queries. So if you have all the data in one place and you want to hunt through that data, um, I have implemented another solution within event list and this solution relies on Sigma. So what is Sigma? Sigma is a converter that converts a generic signature description, which is in a YAML file, into the query language of your choice. And to do that, I have implemented the generate queries button within the PowerShell GUI and you can just just choose the uh, language of your choice and then create your queries. 
You could also just uh, generate the queries in generic YAML format just to see what ten techniques would be covered by what. And if you don't have Sigma installed on your system and you just choose the generate Sigma queries, then you would just get the syntax that you can pipe into your Sigma installation. But if you have Sigma installed on your system and if you have it configured here, then you can just uh, choose the option to generate queries and all the queries will be already translated into your seam system of your choice. So let's look on the command line. To see all the supported seam systems, you can just run this command. And uh, now if we say, okay, I want to generate all the Sigma queries for these three techniques, then I need to specify the path where the Sigma queries will be uh, written to and the name of your seam system and just run the query. And here we go, our very own query. In the markdown file, you get your output as in, in markdown. And here you see, um, as I said, or as I first told, if Sigma is not configured yet, you just get the command that you can pipe into your Sigma backend. You see the YAML files in the YAML folder. So you just need to copy the whole folder and you see just the log in here, or not the log, but you see the queries are just in here. If you don't want to have a description and just copy and paste all the queries, uh, then you can just use this file. Okay, but you can also pipe in a baseline as usual. And you see, oh, okay, at this moment you see nothing, but now you see something. Um, so here, same thing in green. Um, all your, uh, not yet translated, but the uh, command to have it translated later. And you can also, also of course, just pipe one technique into it. And uh, let's see how it looks like if you just specify that you want to have it in the YAML format without having the command. And here you just have a markdown file. So you just get the pure YAML output here uh, that you can use for further analysis and do whatever you like to with your YAML output. And similar thing goes for baseline or one technique. But now let's add the signal path to your configuration so that the system knows where the uh, Sigma path is and so that Sigma can be used. Let's check. Yes, we configured our Sigma path. We can also remove the configuration again with this uh, command. But now having the Sigma path configured, we can just say, okay, let's just translate it directly by Sigma. And this takes some time, so the log fills as it's working. So when all the files are in this folder, so also the markdown file, then uh, the process is finished. Let's give it some more seconds. 
within the UFC what commands have been already processed and converted into uh, the SIEM language of your choice. But you also see um, if, for example, Sigma does not yet support a specific rule. And then you can um, maybe also develop the rule by yourself or uh, ask for support by the Sigma team. And now that it's finished, you see the event log, uh, the event list queries that you can just copy and paste. And you also see the markdown. And now you see that it's just nicely translated into the same language of your choice. And you can also, of course, pipe in your baseline and also just provide one technique. And if you want to remove all the YAML configurations, uh, you can, of course, also do it and also import your own YAML configurations. And also if there was an update uh, on the Sigma platform, you can just import all new YAML configurations in there and have it available for your uh, Sigma, uh, yeah, for your Sigma um, seam query creation. <laughs> <laughs> for your Sigma seam query creation. Yes. And now this takes some time. Yada, yada, yada. And once it's configured or once it's imported, it will be available on the database. But we let's switch back to the presentation. So are you interested in contributing to event list? Do you have any amazing ideas that you would like to see implemented? Do you have any ideas for new features or do you just want help to implement cross-platform support and to improve the data? So please, I would be super happy to have you on the team to uh, improve event list. Uh, just create a pull request or contact me. Uh, I'm super happy to work with you on this project. So what you should have learned in this session is that security auditing is amazing and you should do it way more often. Event list can help you with that. And now we can also automate it over the command line. And last but not least, automate all the things. I'm super interested to know what your use case is. Let me know, connect with me on Twitter. I'm excited on how you will use event list. You will find all the slides and also the demo code on the official psconf eu github repository and you will find the event list uh, code on my github repository already mark those days june 1 to 4th 2021 in your calendars because this is the date of the next powershell conference europe and hopefully this will be again in person. So I'm super looking forward to seeing you all there. I really miss you guys and I'm happy to see you all next year again in Hanover when PSConf EU 2021 takes place. Thank you so much for your attention. Have fun with EventList and have a great day. I see you next year. Bye-bye.